Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This video we're going to go over the this is going to be a beginner guide for Demon Lock. This build's going to be a hybrid build, so it's going to be Demon Lock with Torture Mastery. Um and we'll kind of just go into it. But first let's go over the changes they made since the last patch. Um so Demon Lock is Blood Pact. This is the skill here. Um assimilates the contract a demon gain additional 50 max health, 30 armor and 30 magic resistance when you transform. And your entire body is covered in abyssal flame, taking 1.5% damage per second and dealing 2 magic damage per second to nearby characters. So this ability, essentially, you transform into a demon. When you transform, you initially, you get 50 max health, 30 armor, 30 magic resistance. Then, while you're in demon form, your, your body takes 1.5% damage per second. So you'll slowly start to be draining health. But at the same time, anybody near you will be dealt 2 magic damage per second. Um, keep in mind, with demon lock... You almost always want to run Soul Collector. Because if you look at the second part of this, it says, By consuming Darkness Shards, you gain plus one all attributes effects for each Darkness Shard consume. So, Soul Collector, you know, uh, each time you kill a PvE, PvP enemy, you get one uh, Darkness Shard, up to a maximum of five. So, when you have five Darkness Shards, and you transform, you're plus five all and all attributes um, for that duration of Demon Form. But keep in mind, when you do transform out of Demon Form, you lose your stacks and you have to get it all over again. Um, something to keep in mind, though, while you're in Demon Form, say you kill a PvE or you kill a player or something, you will get Darkness Shards while you're in Demon Form. So if you kill enough people in Demon Form, you can go out of Demon Form, back into your player, and then go back in with the Shards that you've accumulated while in Demon, if that makes sense. That's kind of a lot. Um, but yeah, so this is exactly what Demon Form is. It's pretty strong. Demon Form's E is an ability that for four seconds, um, you heal 5% of the enemy's max health per hit, um, up to a maximum of 30 health. So it's really strong in fighting. Um, it, it, it actually makes it really easy to fight barbarians too, because barbarians are like, they have a really health, high health pool. So you'll be healing a lot off of them and you'll be able to just sustain throughout the fight. Even if they have savage war for the most part, you can typically beat a barbarian. Um, as long as your weapon's not like a heavy weapon, like a two-handed weapon, then your swings are really slow. You won't be able to capitalize on that four seconds where you can heal. That's why I recommend typically running like a Chris Dagger or a Falchion or something like that. Um, yeah, but for this build, we're also going to go with Spell Memory here because we're going to be running Torture Mastery. Let's go over to Torch Mastery real quick. Uh, Torch Mastery right here. All curses inflicted upon enemies restore two health to the caster. I made a whole video on this. Uh, you might want to check it out if you don't exactly know how to use this. Just keep in mind, when you are running Torture Mastery, all your spells cost three times as much. So, it's going to cost a lot more to cast spells. But I, I think this is really good for, like, a hybrid build with Demon Lock. Because if you can cast, you know, some spells on an enemy, or if you cast it on some PvE before you go into Demon, this will sustain the damage you take, the 1.5% damage per second. Um, so, essentially, you won't be being dealt damage while they're cursed. Um, another thing to keep in mind, too, you can also pop a potion while you're in Demon or before you go in Demon. So, that, you know, the potion that you pop could offset um, a majority of the 1.5% damage per second that you take, which is really good. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. So, this is going to be a hybrid build, Demon Lock, Torture Mastery. So, um, let's get the other two perks, and then we'll go over the spells here. So, since we're running Demon Lock, we're going to be running Shadow Touch, because we're going to be... Um, this is really strong in melee, and the two health per second sustain really helps, once again, for sustaining the the health reduction that you get from this, the 1.5% per, per second. Um, it's also good for just healing up off the enemies throughout the dungeon. It's just a good perk. And the two true magic damage each swing is really nice. Um, and then I believe the last perk that we'll probably run here, you could run Dark Reflection, but the problem with this is if you get hit by a PvE mob and you have Dark Reflection and Soul Collectors, it'll consume your shards, which you don't want. Um, so say you're like about to go into a fight and you're about to pop Demon, a mob hits you by mistake or something, it consumes all your shards, then you'll go into the, fire, the fight with plus zero all attributes because all your shards are gone. So I typically don't like running Dark Reflection with that because it's pretty risky. Um, so... But, I'll probably end up running Vampirism with here because this will scale with my Torture Mastery. That'll help my heals out a little bit. And this is pretty much the hybrid build that I'd run for my skills and perks. Um, now let's go over to the spells. So for the spells, let's take all this off. We will be running... There's a few different things you can run here. Uh, since we're running Torture Mastery, you're definitely going to want to run Curse of Pain and Power Sacrifice because both of these curses you need to heal off enemies. Um, then from here, you can kind of decide what you want to do. There's a couple of different things you can do. 
you can run Eldritch Shield, um, and you can run Eldritch Shield with Power of Sacrifice. You throw an Eldritch Shield on yourself to shield yourself 25 magical damage, then you hit Power of Sacrifice on yourself as well. Um, I made a, I made another video about this, if you want to know how exactly this works, it's called the Cursed Swordsman build. Um, but essentially, you curse yourself, and it gives you 15 Strength and 15 Vigor. Which, if you have 15 Strength, 15 Vigor, and you have your Soul Collectors, your 5 Shards, and then you pop Demon, you'll have 5 all. Which, you know, whatever armor or, you know, whatever gear you have, you'll have the stats with that. Then you'll have the 5 all. Then you'll have the 15 Strength, 15 Vigor. So you'll be, you'll be really tanky. Um, and you'll have a ton of health, too, because this isn't even including the fact that you get 50 health from Blood Pact as well. So... This is a really good option to use. Um, you also could use Bloodstained Blade, um, you know, which is good. It's five weapon damage. Um, its skill is higher when you hit headshots. But um, keep in mind that each time you swing, it does deal three magical damage to you. So if you do pop Eldritch Shield with Power Sacrifice and Bloodstained Blade, you'll eventually be taking damage from Power Sacrifice at the end because your Eldritch Shield won't be able to cover all this damage together. So keep that in mind. Um... So yeah, you could decide what you want to do with this. You could throw in a Darkness Bolt for some range, which I would recommend because Darkness Bolt comes in clutch. Um, you know, th this is typically what I would run here. Um, yeah, th this this is typically what I run, especially in Squire gear. Obviously, it could be a lot different when you actually put good gear on, like blues with uh, better stats and um, more substats that you get. But first, this is a beginner's guide, so this is just going to be Squire gear. Um, but yeah, we've gone over the skills, the spells, and the perks, so we're going to go over to the kit that you can make on your Squire, or at least what I would make um, with this build. So, first you got to make sure that all your knowledge is covered, so probably go with the uh, Rawhide Gloves and then Occultist Boots off start, and then we'll check the knowledge and see if I'm good. I should be good with this. Yeah, I'm good. So you just want to make sure you'll be able to cast all your spells. So with that... You could just, once you have all your knowledge covered for your spells, um, your spell memory, then you can just go straight into damage here. So, chest piece, we're definitely going to go Occultist Tunic because it has a decent armor, lower move speed, and it has two strength, which strength is good. Um, but before we get started here, if you don't have your Squire looking like this, make sure to do all your quests. Uh, to do your quests, to get better plate gear, you want to do your quest on armor. To get better um, leather, uh, I mean cloth, you want to do your tailor quests. Uh, and to get better leather, you want to do your leathersmith. And for weapons, you want to do your weaponsmith quest. Just a quick overview of that. I mentioned that before. But yes, you want to run... Uh, Occultist Tunic would be really good because the strength, low move speed, decent armor. It's really good. Um, and for the hat, you could run Shadow Mask, but I typically don't run it as much anymore because it has no headshot protection. And those headshots do a, a grip of damage. you got to have some sort of headshot protection. But if you want to move quicker, this is an option. Um, I'll probably run Shadow Hood because it has 8% headshot protection and it gives you 2 strength. Um, and it gives you a little bit of uh, magic resistance too, which is nice. So there's that. And then to make sure that we're quick enough, I'll probably drop some trousers on here too to finish off the kit here. Um, this is a pretty decent kit. You'll be starting with you know 4 strength, um, which is a decent amount. I believe 11 is base, so plus 4 will drop you to or jump you up to 15 strength. Um, and then, you know, if we say we want to see how much damage we're going to do, we're 15 strength, then you get plus 5 all. That'll be 20 strength from uh, Soul Collector turning into Demon. 20 strength, and then say you drop Power of Sacrifice on yourself, that's 35 strength. And this is just in Squire gear. So that's that's extremely strong. Um, and then we'll go over to the Squire and see what weapons. You can pretty much decide what weapons you want to run. I would recommend running a Heater Shield, though, if you're going to do that. Um, it's... It's just it just comes in clutch, especially if you're gonna end up one v doing and stuff like that. You you really need the shield. So Chris Dagger is a really good weapon to use. Um, the reason why is because there's quick swings, right? The quicker swings you have while you're in E, the more hits you can get off and the faster you can heal. Because the the demon's E, which you can't see in here, um, for four seconds you heal five percent of the enemy's max health. Uh, keep in mind, like enemies that are really good for this, like the sub bosses, like Cyclops or Troll, you can heal up a ton. I, I believe you heal up the max amount, which is 30, because it's 5% of the enemy's max health, up to 30 health per swing. And, you know, centipedes also have a ton of health pool. Um, you can get to full health in, like, three swings. So if, you, if you're running, like, a Chris Dagger, and you're swinging on a centipede, like, you'll get max health super quickly, uh, which you'll probably see in some of the PvP. That's typically what I do. If I'm getting low, I'll just go to a centipede, heal up real quick, and just we're back in the game, transform out of demon. But 
yeah, Chris Dagger is really good. Um, you could run Falch. You also you could run Bardiche or Halberd or Longsword. You know, whatever whatever weapon you're comfortable with. This build is pretty flexible as far as weapons goes. You know, whatever you're good with using. Um, and then for the you know the secondary set, of course, we use Spellbook, and that's pretty much it. I typically run Chris Dagger, so I'll be equipped in that. But I bounce around with Falch depending on how I'm feeling. But yeah, this is pretty much the setup that you're gonna want to run here for. Uh, this is this isn't like the standard. Uh, Demon Lock, this is like a hybrid with Torture Mastery, which I found to work actually really well. Because if you're really good with Caster, and you want to be strong up close, this is really good. Because you can beat Barbarians and Fighters in Demon Lock very easily. Like, I mean, even even Clerics, for how strong Clerics are right now, you can typically beat them up close too. Um, because the heal on the E is just, it's so nice, being able to heal up. I mean, you're healing like, if you can get four swings off in four seconds with Chris Dagger... You know, you're healing probably like 60 to 100 health, which is insane. It's a, it's a ton of extra health that you get while you're damaging them. That's not even including the health that you get back from Shadow Touch and all the damage you're doing towards them, especially if you can get your your buffs off. Because the buffs, I mean, you get four or five tap to the head with Chris Dagger with these buffs. 35 strength is crazy in Square Gear. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to hop in the Discord, if you got any questions or if you just want people to play with, we got like probably 140 members in our Discord. I'll drop it in the description. Now, we run tournaments every Sunday. Um, if you want to sign up, uh, go into the Discord, go to the announcement sections, and we'll let you know exactly you know when our next tournament will be or what tournament we're doing because we're doing like different ones every week. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you got any questions on the video specifically, comment down below, and let's get into PvP.